Hello and welcome, I'm Vedamshi and today me and my friends are going to talk about our learnings in various cultures. I will talk about the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is the best known and most frequently translated Vedic religious texts. The Bhagavad Gita is a scene of two great armies, banners flying drawn up opposite one another on the field. The fact that Arjuna and his charioteer, Lord Krishna, are carrying on their dialogue between the two armies suggests the indecision of Arjuna about the basic question. Should he enter the battle and kill those who are friends and kinsmen? There are 18 adhyayas, which are chapters, and 700 shlokas originally written in Sanskrit. The text covers jhana, bhakti, karma, karma, and raja yoga. I'm going to chant a few shlokas from adhyaya 1, which is a conversation between Dhritarashtra and Sanjaya. Om Srimat Bhagavad Gita Atta Pradamodya Yaha Arjuna Vishaya Yoga Ha Dutarashtra Vacha Dharma Kshetre Kurakshetre Samaveta Yutsavaha Mamaka Pandava Shaiva Kimakurvata Sanjaya Sanjaya Uacha Dishvasu Pandavani Kam Yuram Duryodhanastada Achaya Pasangamya Rajam Vachanam Abravis Pashesan Pandupusranam Achaya Mahatim Shamum Yuram Dupala Putrena Tavasishena Dimasa Atushura Maheshwasa Pimajina Samayudi Yudano Viratasha Dupadasha Maharataha Vishtaketu Sehitanaha Kashi Rajasya Viryavan Purujit Kunti Bojasya Taibyashana Pungavaha Yuda Manisha Vikranta Uttama Jasya Viryavan Sabadro Taupadeyasha Sarvayeva Maharataha Ashmakam to Vishishtaye Tani Bola to Jotama Nayaka Mama Senyasha Sanyadam Tambra Vimise Bavan Bishma Shakar Nesha Krupasha Samisinjeha Ashwadama Vikar Nesha Samadati Tadevacha Anyesha Bahavahashura Madate Kakta Jivita Nana Shastra Praharanaha Sarve Yutta Visharata Pariyaptam talasmakam, Param Bhishma birakshitam, Pariyaptam idame ishtam, Param Bhima birakshitam, Ayaneshu cha sarveshu, Yada bhava avasita, Bhishma meva birakshantu, Pavantaha sarve yevahi, Nasya sanjana yan harsham, Kuruvrutta hai pitamaha, Vimhanagam ninatyoshehi, Shankam datmuhu pratapavan, Tathasya sankasya bedasya, Paravana ka gomukaha, Saha seva bihanya, Shriptastama Lobavat, Tataha Shweta Haya Yukti, Matisyan the Nistito, Madhavaha Panda Vasheva, Divyoshanka Pradasmatuhu, Ancha Janyam Rishi Kesho, Devadatam the Nanjaha, Boundram Datmo Maha Shankam, Bimakrarma Vukodaraha, Ananta Vijayam Raja, Kunti Putro Yudhishtaraha, Nakalahasa Devasha, Gosha Mani Pushpako, Kashesha Parameshwasaha, Shikandisha Maharataha, the Stadium No Viratasha, Satikisha Aparajitaha, the Padodrapa Deyasha, Sarvayeva Maharataha, Sobadesha Mahabahu, Shankam Dasmuhu Pratak Pratak, Sagosho Data Rashtanam, Shadayani Vradariat, Nabasha Pradavim Chaya, the Malobuanu Nadayan. Ata Vivastitan Dushwa, Tatarasham Kapiswajaha, Pravrute Shakta Sampate, Darudram Yapandavha, Rishi Kesham Tada Vakyam, Ida Maha Mahipate, Arjuna Vasha Sena Yoru Bayor Matye, Vidam Sapaya Mikshuta, Yava Yesta and Rikshaham, Yostuka Mana Vastita, Karma Yasa Yobayam, Asmindra Samutime. Hi, my name is Sulalit. Today I'm going to talk about Vishnu Sashanamam. The Vishnu Sahasranamam is the chant of the thousand names of Lord Vishnu. It is also one of the most popular stotras in Hinduism. The Vishnu Sahasranamam is found in the Mahabharata. This is found in the Anushasana Parvam, chapter relating to orders or rules to the kings of Mahabharata. Anushasana Parva is in the form of questions and answers between Yudhisthira and Bhishma Pitamaha. When Yudhishthira, the eldest of the Pandavas, became the king of Hastinapura, he went to Bhishma the Great for taking advice. 
As to a question as what is the best possible stotra, Bhishma answers that it is the Vishnu Sahasranamam and teaches it to you this Yudhisthira. There are totally 108 slokas in the Vishnu Sahasranamam. I could recite up to 50, but today I will just recite the Dhyanam, which has 7 slokas. Suklam, Bharadram, Vishnum, Sasi, Varnam, Chaturbhujam, Prasanna, Vadanam, Jayat, Sarvig, Nopishantiye. Dhyanam, Shirodan, Vatpadese, Shushmana, Vilsat, Saikate, Motika, Nam, Mala, Krupta, Sanastas, Patika, Manirbhar, Motika, Mandita, Angaha, Shubhar, Rabbar, Adapar, Prachita, Mukta, Piyusha, Varshahi, Anandina, Punya, Dhyanam, Gada, Shankar, Panem, Mukundaha, Bhupadav, Yashina, Birvya, Dashonyo, Shanda, Surya, Ochi, Netre, Karna, Vasa, Sero, Jom, Upabdano, Yashu, Vasthe, Mabdihi, Antastam Yashu Vishwam Sarnak Bhubo Gandhav Daichaihi Chitram Ambam Yatekam Dhrubhavsham Vishnu Vesam Namami Shanta Karam Bhujga Senam Patma Nabam Shuresham Viswa Garam Agna Sadusam Mega Varnam Shubhangam Lakshmi Kantam Kamala Nenam Yogar Rana Gamyam Vande Vishnu Babaharam Sarva Lokekanadam Mega Shamam Pita Koshe Vasam Shivat Sankam Kosdubod Basitangam Punyo Petam Punyakai Taksham Vishwam Manda Sarva Lokekanadam Namas Samasta Bhuta Nam Adi Bhuta Ay Bhubrate Anek Rupa Rupa Vishnave Pravishnave Shashanka Chakram Sabirita Kunnam Sapita Vastram Sashi Rekshnam Sahara Vakshas Dala Shobhi Kautvam Namami Vishnam Sersa Chatavijam Chayayam Parajata Sihema Simmasano Peri Asinamam Vyadashamam Ay Taksham Anankritam Chandrayanam Chaturbam Shivat Sankita Vakshasam Rukmani Satchabam Abhyam Saitam Krishna Mashe. So, from the meaning from Shiro Danvat Pradesh all the way to Mukunda, the meaning is that that Mukunda makes us all holy, who wears all over his body pearls made of spatika, who sits on the throne of garland of pearls, located in the sand of precious stones by the side of the sea of milk, who gets happy of the white cloud sprayed of drops of nectar, and who has the mace, the wheel, and the lotus in his hands. Hope you like my research. Bye. Namaste. My name is Sandi. Today I'm going to recite the Guru Ashtakam. The Guru Ashtakam is a series of shlokas which honor and respect the Guru or teacher. Let's get started. Vandeham Satchidanandam Vedatitam Jagat Gurum Nityam Purnam Nirakaram Nirgunam Sarvasanstitam Paratparataram Deyam Nityamanandakaranam Vidyakash Madhyastam Shutas Patikasangipam Akhandamandalakaram Vyaptam Yena Characharam Tatpadam Dashitam Yena Tasma Shri Guru Vedamaha Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Saksha Parabrahma Tasma Shri Guru Vedamaha Adnyanati Mirandasya Yanam Chanushilakaya, Yakshuran Mila Tamyena, Tasma Shri Guru Ven Maha, Shaitan Yam Shashwatam Shantam, Vyoma Titam Niranjalam, Binduna the Kalatitam, Tasma Shri Guru Ven Maha, A Naked Janma Samprapta, Karma Bandavidaine, Atman Yana Pradanena, Tasma Shri Guru Ven Maha, Shishyana Mokshidanaya, Vilya de Hadarine, Sadehe Apivide Haya, Tasma Shri Guru Venamaha, Guru Rashtakamitam Sotram, Sayam Pratas to Yapate, Savimukto Bave Lokat, Satguru Kripiyadram. Thank you for listening. Bye. Hi, my name is Aaron, and today I'm going to be telling you about I'm going to be playing a Christian song.
Hi, my name is Krishna Mazali and I will tell you about Siddhi culture, the amazing Indian Africans. <laughs> culture and life. One, Siddhi refers to the ethnic group living in the Indian subcontinent that descends from the Bantu people of Africa. Two, in India, this group first came in the 7th century and settled in areas that now comprise the states of Karnataka, Gujarat, Maharashtra, and Andhra Pradesh. Three, the city population is currently estimated at around 270,000 to 350 individuals with Karnataka, Gujarat, and Hyderabad in India, and Makran and Karachi in Pakistan as the main population centers. Culture and Life, page two. Four, Siddhis are primarily Muslims, although some are Hindus and others belong to the Catholic Church. Five, the Siddhis are recognized as a scheduled tribe in three states and one union territory, Goa, Gujarat, Karnataka, Diu, and Daman. Six, in 1987, the little known Siddhis came into national limelight when the Sports Authority of India SAI decided to use the natural athleticism of these Indian Africans to win medals under its special area of doing SAG program. Facts 1. They make and eat red ant chutney. 2. They live all across India. 3. They fish with harpoons like they own gun. 4. Siddhis are in India because of slavery. 5. Siddhis mostly play drums more than any other instrument. Bye. Namaste. My name is Washit and today I'm going to talk about, talk about um, Indian culture. Yoga, meditation, Ayurveda, and chess were made by India. Ayurveda is one of the world's oldest um, holistic uh, healing system. It was made 3,000 years ago by India. Religion. India is birth birthplace of Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism, and Sikhism, collectively known as Indian religions. India is one of the most religiously diverse nations. Indian culture has many festivals like Holi and Diwali. Dances, um, Bhartanatyam, Kathak, Kathakali, and Manipuri are traditional dances of India. Sweets. Food. Indian sweets are famous. They're made from sugar, jaggery, and dry foods. Indian food contains a lot of spices. These are some dresses people wear in India. Fasting. The science behind fasting. Fasting is a part of Hindu culture. A Japan scientist won the Nobel Prize for finding that um, fasting heals your body. The science behind temples. Most temples are made where there are um, uh, magnetic wave lines which help uh, your positive energy grow up and um, others people and other people's um, positive energy to grow up. Namaste. Hi, my name is Rishi. I'm going to talk about ancient Greek culture. Literature and theater was an important aspect of Greek culture and influence for the sophisticated sculpture and ar architecture. Greek culture influenced the Roman Empire and many other civilizations and it continues to influence modern culture today. The civilization of Ancient Greece emerged into the light of world history in the 8th century BC. Normally it is regarded as coming to an end when Greek fell to the Romans in 136 BC. Can you think of modern day art, architecture or theater that may have been influenced by Greek culture? Ancient Greek architecture. Greek architects provided some of the finest and most distinctive buildings in the in the entire ancient world. Some of their structures, such as temples, theaters, and stadia, would become staple features of towns and cities from antiqu antiquity.
query onwards. The Greek concerned with the simplicity, proportion, perspective, and harmony in their buildings would go on to greatly influence architects in the Roman world. There are five orders of classical architecture, Doric, Lonic, Corinthian, Tuscan, and Composite. All names such in later Roman times. Ancient Greek sculptures. The sculpture of ancient Greece from 800 to 300 BCE took nearly inspiration from Egyptian and Near Eastern monumental art and over centuries evolved into uniquely Greek vision of the art form. Greek sculptures were particularly concerned with proportion, poise, and the idealized perfection of the human body. Their figures, their figures in stone and bronze have become some of the most recognizable art ever produced by any civilization. The Greek theater. Greek theater began in the 6th century BC in Athens with the performance of tragedy plays at religious festivals. These in turn inspired the, the genre of Greek comedy plays. Greek drama would be hugely popular and performances spread around the Mediterranean and influenced Hellenistic and Roman theater. The ancient Greek drama was a theoretical culture that flourished in ancient Greece from 600 BC. Ancient Greek food. The ancient Greek diet consisted of food that were easily cultivated in the rocky terrain of Greece's landscape. Breakfast was eaten just after sunrise and consisted of bread dipped in wine. Lunch was again bread dipped in wine along with some olives, figs, cheese, or dried fish. Supper was the main meal of each day. It was eaten near a sunset consisted of vegetable, fruits, fish, and possibly honey cakes. Sugar was unknown to ancient Greeks, so natural honey was used as a sweetener instead. Ancient Greek clothing. Greek men wore a tunic called chitin with a belt around the waist. Greek women wore a similar robe called peplos that went down to their feet. For walking on dusty roads, they wore boots or leather sandals. I'm done. Thank you. Hi, my name is Utvika, and I'll tell you about ancient Egypt culture. Egypt has a rich history and culture 5,000 years ago. Most of the Egyptians are mathematicians and scientists. First civilization to invent writing, so that's when writing was invented. They believe animals are gods, like cats, hawks, and lions. They believe their pets as gods. Cats bring good luck to the people they live with. They buried their pets with mummies. Both men and women wore makeup. They did not travel on camels. They traveled on donkeys. They used tooth powder as toothpaste. Um, the tooth powder was made of bird eggshells, ashes, and volcanic rocks. They loved board games like Mahen and Senate. This is Mahen and this is Senate. They believe that the head was the spiritual center of the body. There are seven steps to make a mummy. First, they wash the body. Then, they remove the organs. Later, they keep the stuffing, they keep some stuffing in the body and let it sit for 40 days. After
after they remove the stuffing and they cover the body with linen strips. They won't remove the heart because they think the, the heart was the soul of the body. They invented the 365 day calendar. The pharaoh kept his hair covered. They used moldy bread to help with to help with infections. Egyptian uh, Egyptian pyramids were built to preserve tombs. The pyramids contained tunnels and mysterious boxes. The pyramids faced due north. The Great Pyramid was Giza. The pyramids were built 4,000 years ago. The majority religion is Islam. Many Egyptians believed that when it came to a death of the, um, when it came to death of their pharaoh, they had to bury the pharaoh deep inside the pyramids. Ancient Egyptians were playing harps, flutes, neigh, and phone. This is a neigh, and this is phone. Bye.